Today I'm going to show you my pontoon setup to catch catfish. This is a 2020 Bennington 20 foot SV pontoon. 20 foot long and it's Bennington's value model. It came with a Road King trailer, single axle. One of the few things that I don't like about the boat is that it's a single axle trailer. Being a cat fisherman, I've mounted all kinds of crazy stuff on it and added to the weight. So I'm just worried that the single axle trailer over time won't be enough. I've mounted a spare tire to the frame and I have a bike lock through it just to deter criminals from stealing my tire. Anybody who wants that tire is going to get it if they want it. Standard trailer with brakes. I got a jack on it. does have a cool stairwell that goes up into the boat and it's got a half gate to allow for a trolling motor. The trolling motor is a Minn Kota power drive. 70 pound thrust, 24 volt system iPilot. I love this trolling motor. It pulls this boat at top speed with no current at about two and a half miles per hour and it can spot lock in strong river current and hold this boat pretty steady. As you can see, I have a quick release mount system. I just take this lock off right here, and pull this U-bolt out. The whole trolling motor will come off of this puck here that's mounted to the deck. And basically it's just for when I don't use the boat for a while or uh, you know, I'm going out of town or something and I want to take the trolling motor off of there just to keep people honest. It is a pretty expensive trolling motor. I've accentuated the boat in green. I love the color green. Even my American flags on the boat are green. My rod holders are green, which I'll get to soon. It's got a side gate on it. So that opens up and it makes it easy to take stuff out and load it up on the side of the boat when I'm ready to go somewhere. And it's a good side access for when I'm docking the boat or when some people are swimming. There's where the fuel goes in up here. Back here you can see where my pump is mounted and that goes to my live wells. And then there's my transducer for my unit. Another American flag on the back. Powering this barge is a Yamaha four-stroke 90 horsepower unit. I love this engine. It runs very quiet. It's very reliable. It's very easy to perform service on. Also in the back, I have two straps that go down to the trailer. There's also a ladder in the back in case you want to take a dip. You just unsnap this and the ladder comes down. You can go take a dip. Got another docking rope on the back. There's another access door on the back with a small swim platform. This helps me when I'm anchoring or when I have to use the restroom or anything like that. It's just a small little platform for access. I like it. As you can see, the trailer has plastic on it to help guide the boat up on the trailer. As we come around, we got another American flag there. We got some cleats, all standard running lights. All right, let's go up these steps here. Oh, kind of nice handle here to grab onto. The gates are fairly simple to operate. You just pick up and swing in. Same thing with the side gate. Close it. It's got this little bumper right here and that holds the door in just like that. On the front I have eight monster rod holders mounted. I primarily catfish off the front of the boat so I have most of my rod holders mounted on the front. These are mounted onto the rails with these monster rod holder square mounts that you can get at monsterrodholder.com. Up front we have these two boxes that came with the boat. This one is a live well or a bait well. You can use it for either one. You have decked out the whole front of the boat with stickers of YouTube channels and companies that I like. If you have a sticker and you want to send it to me, just send me a message. Right down here, you can see where the trolling motor plugs into the box. It's wired down to this plug here. And inside of the box are two 12 volt motive batteries that are wired in tandem together. And then right here, I have an onboard battery charger and whenever I want to charge the batteries, I just take this out, put it over the side of the boat and I run an extension cord out to the boat 
and both of these batteries charge up overnight no big deal i highly suggest one of those i'll put the link in the description right here in the front we have a place for two pedestal seats they came with the boat they're the same color as the back seats and they just swivel around i usually don't use them unless we have a bunch of people on and we're going riding here's probably the biggest question i get asked about my boat is where did i get my cutting board from well the simple answer is i made it i have a video about how i made this board and here soon i'm going to be doing a live stream where you can build a cutting board live with me check out that video i'll put the i cards up in the corner and the links in the description right here i have a place to put my pliers and back here i have a place to put my knife if you're wondering why it's so clean i just pressure washed a boat if you can't tell it's a catfish boat and it gets pretty dirty back here i have vents so i can just scrape off scales or unused bait and as you can see it goes over the rail so all of that will fall down into the water i've got it mounted onto the boat with a scotty rod holder mount that's the scotty depth finder mount scotty makes a square rod holder mount for their rod holders so i just took the rod holder out and put this platform in there to mount my cutting board on pretty simple right behind the cutting board there's a seat here which is pretty comfortable but then if you open the seat up voila there's a huge bait tank down here there's also a bucket that it came with to keep minnows alive in i don't use it basically i'll catch white perch or bluegill and i'll just throw them in here it's got a stem that you screw in right here uh, to keep your water from going out and that's also the drain and then the water comes out of here and you could turn it on and off by tightening up this release valve on the console i have a ram mount for my fish finder i have a low rant 7 reveal triple shot uh, i don't really care for the unit so much that's why i don't have it out here i'm saving up to upgrade but i just wanted to point out the mounting system ram mount fits perfectly right there on that corner doesn't take up too much space continuing on to the console there's a little storage box down here you can open that up and i have my table stored under there and then there's a little courtesy light right here that'll come on when the lights are on on the console there's a little wind deflector right here it actually does more than you think it would one thing i forgot to show you while i was down is the docking lights those turn on right here you got your horn plenty of cup holders i think there's like 14 cup holders on this boat it's nuts that's the switch for the live well aerator i have a trim gauge rpm gauge it tells you how many hours you have on the boat right here and of course a fuel gauge another cup holder we have another accessory switch nav lights an anchor light and then an accessory switch here that powers uh, the main power for the depth finder and for the radio and any other auxiliary switches like your, your usb charging port and your audio port a little kicker stereo here i've already lost the button on the top i don't use the stereo too often but it does the trick you can see the speakers down here on the console there's one here on that bench and one on the other one here's the throttle right here it doesn't have a shifter right here like the old school uh throttles but i, I kind of like it you just have to be careful not to jam it into reverse if you're in forward another cup holder up here so you crank it up you got your kill switch and i got my fire extinguisher of course also to have a 12 volt charging plug here or auxiliary plug plug in lights anything else you need across from the console something you don't normally see on catfishing pontoon boats are couches and uh, initially i didn't think i would like having couches on the boat but it's nice when you have a couple people fishing with you uh, it's good and relaxing and these seats man i don't know what they're made out of but they don't fade like they just don't fade they don't really stain you they don't rip uh, I love these seats. I haven't put the cover on it, but twice since I've had the boat because I usually fish every weekend and you can see that the seats are still in great shape. Up under the seats, you have your storage there. I keep my planter boards, filming equipment, tackle boxes, uh, emergency gear, anything you need to store, you can store in there. And then back here in this storage unit, I have my life jackets, my throwable, that sort of stuff. Right here is a place where you put the pedestal table in case you want to have a little lunch or dinner on the boat. Ah, I almost forgot my wife's favorite part. Right here 
you have a changing station slash privacy room. And right there, I have a five gallon bucket with a toilet seat lid on it for my lovely wife and any other ladies that may come on the boat. They can have a little privacy and have a nice comfortable place to use the restroom. One of the most important things on the boat is this bimini top. This thing will keep you protected, keeps the sun off of you, keeps you cool. I don't know how I ever fished without a bimini top. It's definitely a necessity. This winter, I plan on getting an enclosure installed on this bimini top so that we can fish in comfort all winter long. When it's not in use, the bimini top folds all the way back and all the way down to stay out of your way and to make traveling a lot easier because it's less wind resistant when it's down on this small arm here. When it's up, it's on this big arm right here. Moving on back to the rear of the boat, the captain's chair is obviously the most comfortable chair on the boat and it swivels around 180 degrees. So if you're drifting out the back or fishing out the back, you can see your rods. All right, back here we have another storage box. This is where my cranking battery stays, and I also store some rope and some other items in there. Along the back, you'll notice I have five more rod holders. That's in case I'm fishing out the back of the boat. If I'm anchored in current or spot locked in current, I'll fish out the back of the boat. And sometimes I have to drag baits into the wind, which I've had to do a lot recently. So that helps me fish out of the back of the boat, having these rod holders on the back. As you can see, I have nine rocket holder rod holder tubes. And basically that's for traveling on the lake. I don't travel down the road with the rods in there because they sit up actually really high and they would knock trees down. Or actually the trees would probably knock the tips off of the rods. But it's great traveling on the lake or on the river. It keeps the rods off of the ground and out of your way. And it looks pretty cool too. Right here we have under deck access. You can unscrew that and get to wires and such under the boat. And then another pedestal seat. So that's the third pedestal seat that the uh, boat did come with. And again, I just leave it out. So we have all this extra room back here for storage and activities. Right here is a plate you can take off to access the fuel tank if you need. And over here is a cup holder. And that's just not some random corner bumper there I don't know what you would call it but behind those snaps there is the water separator so it separates the water from the fuel coming from the tank it goes here and then it goes to the engine right here is the fuel tank there you go here's a back view of the boat I love the boat it's got lots of room to catfish it's nice and comfortable it is a heavy boat you know it doesn't tow the easiest I don't really care for the trailer too much but man this is a great boat and it's not as expensive as you would pay for a lot of other catfishing boats at top speed that 90 horsepower engine will run us about 24 to 25 miles per hour if we're going with the current and if I'm the only one in the boat uh, with another person going against the current maybe 22 23 miles per hour it's definitely not a fast boat but uh, it's not slow either, and it gets you there comfortably and safely, and I just love it. All right, everybody, thanks for coming along with me on this boat walkthrough. I've had a lot of questions recently about my boat, and so I figured it was time to do an update video. I did a video a long time ago, but some things have changed on the boat, and uh, that was right when we got it, too. Well, you know the drill. Hit that thumbs up for me. Make sure you're subscribed. Share the video out if you don't mind. If you have a question about the boat, please leave me a comment in the comment section. I also have a lot of information about the boat in the description that you can check out. Links to gear I use and links to things that are on the boat. Until next time, everybody. Happy fishing.